car finds a way home. Hey, Clats! So for those of you guys who are new to my channel, I recently just came back from a cargo ship voyage across the Atlantic Ocean. Many of you guys who are new to the channel have been coming on from that video which I made about crossing the Atlantic. And one of the biggest questions I've been getting in the comments is, how did I manage to do this? How do you get on a cargo ship? The simple answer is, it is very difficult and it is very involved, but that's why I'm here to explain it all to you. Now, the first thing I would say before watching this video to kind of get a taste of what a cargo ship voyage is like to see if it's even worth it for you to go on, I would say, watch my whole series I'll link it somewhere either down below or up here on the screen and you can watch the entire voyage it was about 17 days where I was traveling from Europe all the way to North America a lot of people figured that I just hopped onto a cargo ship and just kind of rode along it doesn't work like that at all and one of the reasons I made this whole video series and I'm making this video is because on YouTube there's absolutely no information about this there's maybe two or three videos on YouTube that go into small details about how to get on the trip or what it's like being on it but nothing very serious so that's why I'm creating this whole video series about the cargo ship to let you guys know what it's like and if you're interested to go for it so let's begin with the most basic question how do you actually get on a cargo ship so you only really have two options which is either working on the trip or paying to actually be on the boat so I don't have much knowledge about working on the ship because you have to kind of do that months in advance it involves a lot of meeting up with the actual cargo ship company or the people who own the ship doing interviews doing healthcare processes all this stuff to get you on that ship and you also pretty much have to sign a contract for a few months to live on that ship which would bring us into our second option which is paying to be on the cargo ship now every ship and every cargo ship company have a different price per room per night whatever it be but essentially it goes as follows you pay for three meals a day so breakfast lunch and dinner and you pay for your room now most rooms come standard for two people so if you have two people with you it'll actually end up being cheaper I was only one person I didn't have another person to go with me so it ended up being more expensive but at the same time the price that you're getting for what you're doing I think is very undervalued my specific cargo ship voyage cost me about 90 euros a night and also there's little fees here and there that you have to pay before was it worth the price a hundred percent yes so another thing you should know about going into a cargo ship voyage it is very slow and it is not a cruise ship and it is not a airplane and it's nothing like you're used to you have a lot of freedoms which literally mean you could do whatever you want on the ship and go wherever you want but at the same time you always have to check in with your crew and your staff and your captain when you actually get on the ship you'll learn about the order of the ship the hierarchy who you follow who you report to who's there to help you and who's there to work and they go over pretty much everything but also once again if you guys want to see a little bit more detail of my experience on that which can give you kind of a basic overview for you make sure you watch those videos down below in the description. So I will be linking down below the websites that you can see what cargo ships are leaving and when and who you can contact about actually booking a voyage. So essentially you have to call the travel agent for that cargo ship company or you can email them and you have to book yourself a trip. It starts off by checking the availability for that trip and you usually have to do this months in advance. So I would seriously say if you want to do this six months before you're going, that would be a perfect time. So check that description to see who you can contact in regards to that. Another thing you have to know is that you have to get travel insurance, which is another cost. Usually travel insurance isn't that expensive, so mine ended up costing maybe $40 for the whole trip. But the most important thing is that you need to have $100,000 covered for repatriation. I think that's how it's pronounced. Which basically means if something happens to the ship or you guys, got, if you guys go down an emergency or something, that's an evacuation basically. It's an evacuation fee that covers up to $100,000. What can you expect when it comes to food? I mean, I don't know how it's like in every cargo ship specifically, but I know that it's kind of a standard amongst all the cargo ships. Food quality is incredible. You know, people who work on those ships work very hard and they're essentially living at sea for months on end without any vacation so they try to give them the enjoyment of stuff when they can and that comes with the food every day and so if you're going on this as a foodie which I am you can definitely expect to have an amazing time so let's talk about the difference between this and doing a cruise ship or maybe flying by plane obviously flying by plane you're going from point A to point B you should never do that on a cargo ship it's way different than what than what you think so you have to go on expecting to be flexible and expecting to be able to be on the ship for long long periods of time you have to go in knowing that there's no internet connection there's no phone service sometimes there'll be email service but it's kind of like a time you have to take to disconnect and focus on other things so I would say a nice tip would be to download a bunch of movies like I did bring some books if you can bring things that will keep you busy so I had my ukulele and I had my computer so I could focus on making videos and editing and stuff so I managed to keep myself busy even though by the last day of that trip I was kind of going a little bit crazy on the ship by myself I'll tell you guys from personal experience it's a very rewarding trip to do you feel like you definitely accomplished something by getting to your destination another thing to note there aren't any attractions really on the trip the only thing that we had on ours and I know this goes as follows for many other cargo ships is uh, a little hot tub 
a gym, and other than that, maybe like a little rec room with a TV and some movies that you could get, but my DVD player and my TV in my room didn't even work, so I was relying strictly on my movies. Other than that, you can take walks around the ship almost whenever. You can go up and down from the bridge. You can sunbathe, which I did, bring music, lots of, lots, lots of music. I definitely think doing this with a significant other, with another person or with a friend, is a lot easier than doing it by yourself, but I managed to do it. So we've covered costs, we've covered food, we've covered what you can expect. I think the only thing left for us to cover is maybe location. Cargo ships literally cover the entire Earth. I'll be linking down in the description to a nice website where you can see how many cargo ships are actually at sea right now. They're pretty much everywhere and they pretty much reach every country and every destination that has a cargo ship port. Some are harder to get to than others and some actually require you to have certain vaccinations like yellow fever and cholera and a bunch of stuff that you have to get ahead of time to get to those stops. So keep in mind some of these trips are very intense, especially when you're crossing the ocean. People who are seasick, I wouldn't recommend doing this trip because there were days when we hit storms and the boat was literally just flopping up and down like this. Which you can also see in the video, I definitely recommend checking that out if you're a seasick person. There was a four day period where I was literally felt like I was drunk for just like four days straight. You were just wobbling around, you couldn't do anything. Overall, incredible experience. Being able to see this vast open ocean, getting to see this ocean that I fly over pretty much every time I travel and getting to see it firsthand being there. But I definitely recommend it to somebody who thinks they're up for it. But I would definitely do your research. I would watch all my videos on it so you can get kind of a flavor of what it's like. And I would contact those travel agencies and cargo ship companies beforehand booking the trip. Try to get some more information about it before you book it because I'm definitely not an expert. I'm just a person who did it one time. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're new here, I make videos every Friday, so I hope you subscribe and join the family. I thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave me some feedback. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll try to answer anything else, and maybe I'll make another video about this in the future that goes even more into detail. And with that, I will leave you boys and girls. I love you long, long time. Like I promised you from last week, here comes a little kiss, huh? Goodbye, clats.